guys can find all the stats there. But this is going to be it. The knife round to settle it. And I, I got to agree with you, though. Just after what we saw on that CT side on cash right now, if TC, Team Solomon start off CT here on Dust2, yeah. with how shaky Cloud9 looked on that T side, it could get nasty real quick here. But this is going to be a very one-sided uh, start, at least as far as the knife is concerned. And TSM are going to be able to pick which side they want to go with first. And there, there's a little bit of a discussion actually happening. They haven't really committed to it right off the bat. So it is going to be TSM staying on That's T side. So yeah, okay. what do you make of this, Henry? This is a bit of an interesting decision. Well, maybe they've got the read on Cloud9 here. Like I said, I would assume they would have gone for the CT side. I consider that that stronger setup there. They've got the real nice adjustable play. They have the, the potential to run the double orb setup as well. It's, it's really strong to watch sometimes. But maybe they've got something else in store for us this time. Deciding to stay on the T side. It's definitely unorthodox these days. Most, of, I'd say about 80% of teams will choose to go CT here. So expect something big here, especially on the pistol. Obviously, CT is famous for boosting up towards short, facing towards middle on these pistol rounds, trying right. to get, you either go for the first kill, or if you don't find anything, at least you get information as to where it's going to be over a long or a B push coming in. So this pistol, I feel, is going to be very important indeed. Don't Just make Stunner cry, boys. Don't make Stunner cry. Don't make him cry, whatever oh, yeah, you do. Yeah, he, he, he was, like look, he was looking right on the edge right there. It's got to come through. It's got to come through. But you're right. This, there, there are a lot of options here on the CT side. And you're, I mean, TSM, they didn't leave Dust2 in for nothing. This is definitely a, a map that they feel confident on, that they can bring the damage on, and it has somewhat drifted over towards more of a T-sided map again since that last update where the, uh, the, the hitboxes got altered. So this is going to be it, guys. The pistol round, the last map in this best of three, the second quarter final of the day between Cloud9 starting on the defense and Team Solo Mid starting on the offense, live here from San Jose at IEM. And right off the bat, straight out into long, we're gonna have some action. And there it is, Zipnik starts it off strong by taking out Shroud, headshot, just tombing him. And it's gonna come down to Sean Garris finding a way out of this tricky situation. He's gonna be able to make it just past, can he find one kill? No, but nothing does make up for it. He gets two of his own, and he's still alive right on the edge. There's the bomb carrier down, there's Skadoodle chiming in, and Device, he's the last man alive in a backstab as well. Finds the kill on nothing, but it was looking so good for TSM. How did it fall apart? Got long control as well, got the first kill, and somehow nothing. Goes absolutely sick there. Shot through the smoke as well to get the bomb down. That should have cleared the round here, but Device, a man with high HP and armor, goes towards long as well. Not the ideal situation to be with the Glock. Is going to be in that one on one with Skadoodle at the moment. Actually manages to take him down. Freakazoid, the last man remaining, and Device has time to play him as well. Legs him down, and what the hell is going on? They had the bomb. Why are they facing him? Just sit back and make him plant. What are you doing, Cloud9? That's disgusting. Do not face that. What is going on? I don't know what you're speechless. I'm stunned. They had the bomb. Why are they facing? I am absolutely CS stunned. CS 101, guys. You had, he didn't even have a, He couldn't even see the bomb. It's towards CT spawn. Oh, God. I feel sick. That was, uh, that was um, a crucial mistake. And Kerrigan with the double tag through mid doors. Nothing. <laughs> he gets punished for his heroics in the first round of this map. The pistol. Kerrigan has a long memory, and you weren't getting out of it that cheap. Nothing. So. Now it gets interesting because it's going to come down to Cloud9 showing some bravery here. They're going to have to get some big damage in, but Device is not allowing it to happen. He takes Shroud off of that A site to start, and Ska just overwhelmed. They are showing no respect in this round, TSM. They go charging in. They get the frags. They lose one and two. Sean is doing some damage, and he gets a Galil to work with as well. But this is still a TSM situation. They've still got control. They've got that bomb plant down now. It comes down to mitigating the damage. Can they keep Sean Garris from getting any more kills? They do not want to suffer, or they don't want to spend any more money here, TSM, in the next round. Well, that's the thing. Like, regardless, Cloud9 can't really do much for the next round. If they manages to get a couple of kills and save the Galil, they have the option there to force by something with some pistols, perhaps. But Sean will be spotted by... Oh, will he be spotted? Yeah, he's going to be taken down. Why is in the end there? But that's, they're still going to be talking about that pistol round, I think. That was absolutely yeah. nuts for that one to be thrown away. But Well, this, this, this is where, one of those moments where you have to have the veterans come in yeah. and say, that's it. Okay, we messed up. Reset. Clear your minds and focus on the fourth round when we're going to have the rifles, when we're going to have Skadoodle with the AWP. Let him go to work. That pistol never happened, right? Sure. It's 0-0, zero, zero, and we've got a fresh start. Well, Sean does get tagged as he crosses the beat. Oh, no, I've opted to go for P250. And Freakazoid takes one in the chest through the doors as well. So... B bombs are completely open, TSM, with a pretty much free round here. There's going to be any CT presence there whatsoever. They're going to be pushing up middle and short as well. Oh my god, that's a great shot from Freak, sort of take down Dupree. Signs of life, at least, for C9, but Device puts an end to it. And the bomb should be planted now, and this is, round is all but tied up. Uh, this is where it gets a little tricky. You don't really exactly want to be facing Device long range with that AK. Zipnix, though, looks to be a little bit more dangerous with the Galil, at least. Shroud is up close, but then Zipnix just slaps him down. And so a very 
clean round here for TSM. It was a little hairy in the second. In the third, they only lose the one man. That's perfectly acceptable. Kerrigan's going to go ahead and upgrade to that AWP. He's already been tagging people left and right to, with the scout in mid doors. Sure. So now he's going to upgrade. But Skadoodle, his counterpart on the CT side, is going to have a sniper rifle of his own. So let's see. It's going to come down to this duel. The, the legendary duel, basically. Dust 2, it's like the op map. And Ska's in position at long. Doesn't get the timing right, though. Doesn't pull the trigger. It's on Shroud instead. Big spray, big damage, but no kills. Ska's there, though, and nothing dunks an aid, and nothing holding the line. He's going to pick up another. And this is now a man advantage for Cloud9. They stopped the TSM hate train. Huge. Hate train, pain train. Yeah, hate train is kind of what I wanted to go with there. Hate but train, I like that. It's a new hate one. train works as well, I guess. <laughs> well, that was a really huge play left. Skadoodle is deciding to stay towards long there. Picks up, I think, three frags in the end. Nutty scenes from him. Oh, it's two frags, sorry. But the, the, the headline is they get the advantage here. Two on three situation. They're actually making their way towards the B. Bomb in hand as well. Just going to be one player towards that B bomb. So it's actually going to be three sort in the off angle here. Should be able to lock them both down here. Just depends on what time he decides to face. Zipex coming in first. He's focused. He's focused. He has to hit this shot. It's crucial. There's a pre. First one down. Gets a second. No, he gets denied. Zipnix down to 12 HP. Will get that kill. Goes leaping past, and he's going to have to commit to this. He doesn't have much time. Well, he does, actually, but they're right outside, and he is just going to guarantee that money. He wants to get that bomb plant. Now it comes down to whether Sean Gares is looking at the right place at the right time, and Zipnix waiting right around the angle, and Sean gets that shoulder shot. With so little HP, Zipnix had just no chance, really. That was nice discipline from Cloud9 on that 2 one situation. Obviously, Sean was outside the doors there. He heard the bomb going down. They knew he was low HP. He could have taken that risk and run in and actually got taken down there. They actually allowed him to plant, made sure they pinned the bombsite correctly, and they get the round on the board without losing a man. Now, that's pretty textbook stuff. Bouncing back from that initial horrible round on the pistol here, and uh, goes to 3-1. Cloud9 picking up that first round. That's a great work from Skadoodle there towards that long. The fast push coming in from TSM, trying to keep things nice and simple, utilizing that spawn they had. Get out there. And once again, they have got that long spawn once more. They could go for that pick once again. Zipex there with that position. He's going to be smoked towards long, maybe faking it this time as his teammates making their way towards B tunnels. Three of them committing to that area. And that smoke on the corner, it's going to take away intel from the CTs as well. Yeah, you can see them just backing off. Instead, it's going to be Skadoodle up on Cat. He spots Dupree in lower dark. It's an easy kill for himself, and that's, again, Cloud9. Strong start in the round here. They've got that man advantage. They've got a two-man advantage. Shroud holding on short, takes out the vice. What is happening? Team Solo bit. they're getting picked off one at a time. Zipnix and Cajun B are the last two alive here, just like that, and we aren't even past the minute mark, Henry. What are they going to do? Well, not really much he can do in this situation. That's what we wanted to see from Skadoodle. Previous tournaments, he hasn't been going for those big faces. He's been playing very passively. Now, it seems he's found his confidence, taking the advantage of being booted up in the spawns here. Cajun B, two players to find on shore. Can he do anything with it? Does get spotted. Doesn't manage to take anything away from it, though. Nothing takes him down. Just going to be Zipex remaining. 50 seconds on the clock, and not a single frag found for TSM as of yet. He's trying to do anything he can. Finds one, but there we go. Shroud does take him down there, and it all came down to that opening pick coming in from the author, Skadoodle there. And that's what he needs to be. They need to be dynamic every single round, changing him up, keeping him unpredictable. And this is where Town Life can become godlike right now. They get the double orb set up here, turrets on either side of the map, rotating them around. Nothing going for the MP9. Obviously, they were aware of the situation with TSM. They're going to be on eco this round, so he knows he can rip heads off. No head armor going to be purchased for him. So that's actually a very viable choice at this stage. Oh, double need. Bit of a carpet bomb going over in Longhouse there. Zipnix dropped down to seven. If he didn't have Kevlar, he was dead for sure. And Zufri instant dink on Hassan Gares. That was a nice shot. Skadoodle is holding Cat, though. This is the key spot. He's going to face two, goes ahead. Finishes the job on Zipnix and backs off to hold long. This is very solid play on his part. All he needs to do is stay alive and make sure they can maintain long control. And another headshot for him. That's three. Let's see. Can he get four? He's still got a chance. Although the man has backed down to CT, and they're looking for a way around this. Kerrigan going to get caught. Freakazoid to Duncan 8 under Dupree. And good recovery there from what was a bit of a scary situation. They can't save the second AWP, though, on cloud Nine side, though. So that's going to be a little bit of an expensive uh, gap. Like you said, though, so Skadoodle, nice disciplined play. They got the first two frags, so they didn't have to overcommit. Knew the 1D could be a possibility. Fell back, waited for teammates to arrive with him, so he didn't give away the bomb side. Gets the third frag and locks it down. We're going to round number seven now. Looks like TSM not going to be opting for that spawn play, base play again once it's time. They're going to actually allow the CTs to actually gain control along. Shroud's getting it himself. Allows Skadoodle to fall back to the A bomb side as well. TSM opting to go towards short. This could be a problem as Skadoodle was going to be booted up. Thinks better of it. Nice it was just a second too late, it seems. Maybe there was some kind of intuition going on there. Instead, it's going to be nothing, just hopping around. If he gets this nade right, it's going to do some big damage. And yeah, three players tagged up. Nicely done. 
It's going to start things off strong. Skadoodle once again in position. Midair shot onto Debris. Gets the follow. No, they lined up and he misses the shot somehow. So it's back to a four on four. And TSM, they should be able to get the bomb in position. Excellent headshot from nothing to start. But he jumps up and Device gets the punish. And this is just tit for tat. It's back and forth. Looking for another headshot trap, but Device hits it first. And now it is going to fall apart here for Cloud9. Freakazoid needs to get in here quick. They have a kit on him, so they do have a little bit of time to play with. But there's the backstab. Shangas takes out Zipnix, spots the man, goes for a jumping off. <laughs> Why not? Go for the jumping orb. Famously works. But uh, there we go then. You can see TSM's approach that round. They were, they were trying to take out Skadoodle towards that car area. He's been playing the last couple of rounds. You smoke off CT spawn, flash towards that spawn, and you drop two players down to CT spawn. The idea is you flush him out and just bring players towards him before he can have a chance to take them down. The problem was, I think they overshot it a little bit. One player jumps out, but there's no problem. The refract came in. They swarm the bomb site and put the fourth round on the board here. So, Cloud9, definitely of a weaker buy this time. Strong Garrett's going to be on the CZ instead of an AWP, so. We saw what he was capable of with the CZ, though. We did against an eco <laughs> very impressive i guess but anyway two kits no head armor obviously not an issue on the ct side against the ak's but the galils are there it's going to help them out and that's one of them sean garris gets taken down by dupree bringing it down to the four and four but the t's definitely the advantage here ct's with no real control of the map apart from stroud who's down along trying to listen out for footsteps freakazoid trying to work some things out from the other side of that smoke as well yeah, that was acceptable, though, for as far as Sean Garris is concerned. He's only got, what, 1,500 bucks invested with that yep. CZ. He takes a guy with a rifle with him. So fair enough. solid work on his part, at least, trading one for one. TSM, though, they've expended a lot of their utility, their nades. They're very low on them. So to get onto a site now with 50 seconds left, it's going to be a little tricky. The Vice just hoping to find somebody out of position. If he can get a headshot, make their jobs easier, that would be fantastic. Look at this play, though, from nothing. This is sneaky stuff. If they try and go through for the split, it would be perfect. But then instead, they're going to go barging onto the site straight up from Upper Dark. They line it up. Freakazoid trades one for one. Nothing will catch the vice, though. And now Cloud9, man advantage retake going onto that site. Skadoodle not going to get the shot. And it has to come down to nothing. And he's not going to get the job done either. So this is where it gets just a little scary here for Cloud9. They're going to start feeling the pressure. B site, one of the hardest sites in CS to retake. Absolutely. Especially with an open hand as well. It's boosting up now, trying to look over that smoke, hoping they get gifted a frag here. Time ticking away. I've got kids to play with, but they need to move right at now and find the frag, and they're not going to happen. Oh. Dupree takes down Stroud. Just going to be Skadoodle left. He gets dealt with as well. They did everything they could, but like we said, that bomb site, when the smoke goes down to the doors as well, it's almost like uh, an item wall being set up. You can't really push through it. They did what they could, boosted over, but it wasn't enough. TSM take the fifth round, and that should be an eco coming in for Cloud9, I'd imagine. Yep, about yeah. 2k on the board, just some PT50 purchase. It's a real chance now for TSM to run away this one and that's gonna help Carrigan gets the headshot through the door onto Sean bringing it down to the five and four and device with the Mac 10 he can just run into that B bomb site now there's only be one player waiting for him that's Freakazoid yeah and Freakazoid he's in a bit of a cheeky spot you're gonna get that headshot on a zip next still making it a little bit more expensive here for TSM every dollar counts but you know that's 300 bucks in Cage's pocket device makes 600 with that SMG kill that's not exactly the way that Cloud9 want this to go they don't want TSM to be making the money absolutely it's just gonna be Shroud number remaining T spawn P250 in hand and uh, if he can just find an AK and stay alive here, that would be wonderful stuff for him. But Carrigan is well aware this may be happening. He's looking towards T-Spawn, decides to just drop out, makes a lot of noise as well. So perhaps, oh no, he's going to actually move towards the B-bomb side. So don't think Stroud will be able to do anything with this one. No, it's not looking too good for him right now. Maybe if he can catch them going out through mid, but the AK is being saved. And now they're just going to move together as this little unit, TSM. Not a real opening here for Shroud to take advantage of, although he is at mid doors. If he can catch out Cajun as Cajun makes his way back mid, this could be it. Shroud with the spray, and somehow Cajun still not going up with the bomb. Somehow survives with 6 HP. Could have actually managed to at least do a little bit more damage to TSM's economy, but it just falls short. And so now let's see where Cloud9 stand. It's right on the edge as far as it's, the money is concerned. It's on the cusp, right? Oh, behind the AWPs. That's been strong setup for them. They're going to go for Famuses, rifles, small amounts of utility, one kit on Skadoodle. So not going to have that powerhouse he's been so far on the AWP. So TSM definitely in the driving seat as we enter round number 10. They're going to be awesome towards long as well. That's good damage through the smoke. And Zipex takes down Shroud. Difficult pill to swallow there as he gets taken out through the smoke completely with a spray. And now that opens up the A bomb site. Skadoodle isolated towards that long area. He has got a teammate there with him, but Device giving the call to his teammates. Get up short. We can plant right now. Short part will go down. And this round is pretty much done. unwinnable, I would say, at this stage. Yeah, this for, is done. Um, Cloud9. Cloud9 really, ro over, like, not over-rotating, but wanting to shut down any kind of push coming out from long, perhaps expecting what uh, came in the first buy round of the half. Nice shot there by nothing to take out Cajun, but then he's going to run face-first into Dupree's bullets, and that's not going to be pleasant. 
So still man advantage, two man advantage now for TSM, and they're just getting picked off one at a time. Really difficult situation here for Cloud9, considering they want to hold on to every single rifle. The fact that they aren't contesting with an attempt at a retake means they just need to be backing off and giving themselves the best chance, and that these, these picks really aren't helping them. Well, I felt bad for Shroud at the beginning of that round. There's not really much you can do there. You've opted to go three players down towards long. The first pick comes in for a spray, like on the yeah. smokers. Just Zipex is ho shooting and hoping that pulls it off, and then it's gives the call. The device can make his way up. Oh, uh, we lost side. another one here as well. Freakazoid gets caught. Oh, so they, and well, Sean Gares does hold his own in the end, and he does manage to get one kill. He stays alive, but they have a single Famas now to work with here, Cloud9. So. Again, this is a quasi buy situation, I think, for them. They're just going to have to accept that TSM are going to get up onto eight rounds. It's a lot more difficult on the CT side, though, right? All you can really justify is P250s, maybe a couple of 5.7s here, but they're not actually going to invest too heavily into this one. Just Sean with his FAMAS in hand, and the T's looking like they're going to be pushing in to the B bomb site emphatically here. It's divided into charge, and Mac 10 finds Freakazoid there, and now the bomb site is for sale as the CTs are rotating in the back there. They're going to run into Cajun B, though. He's waiting in T spawn. It's for sale, it's sold. They bought it, and well, Kerrigan, he's, he takes out Skadoodle, nothing is there to trade. And TSM, this should be a solid anti-eco situation for them. Device on the hunt, he's gonna spot the man at range, and he's gonna be able to pick him off with that MAC-10. Nice long distance spray there, and again, Shroud, last man alive here for Cloud9, just hoping to find somebody to get a headshot on, maybe get lucky and hold on to an AK. Now, this, this, is, this is actually, I mean, it's still decent, it's just giving Cloud9 time to talk about what's gonna come next. What is the play? in the next round. Is it time to take a risk, Henry? We haven't really seen any kind of aggro mid pushes, any kind of pushes into upper dark. Thing. We've just seen a lot of just, you know, what, we're going to take the fight here at long if they come at us. Give Skadoodle the AWP. Yeah. Take him towards long at the start of the round. Even just like go for that first pick. Try and that when the TSM get the spawn, they go, they utilize it and go towards there. The problem is they're smoking off that corner as well. That's the problem because Skadoodle can't really do much with that. They need to work out how they're going to counter it. I would say, actually thinking about it, just leave long completely. Let them have it. Play the AWP on the A bomb side potentially. The barrel's looking towards that. I say that area. And then you can actually allow TSM to have long and then try and push other areas in the map, pushing into B tunnels once you know three men from the T side have been committed to long. Yeah, and this time around, Shroud isn't hanging around to take that fight with Zipnix, so no joy for Zipnix. Skadoodle up on Cat, and not sure if he spotted him, and yes, he will get the repeat on the device. There's the strong start that Cloud9 were looking for in this key round, and Kerrigan looking to try and force things. Flash into mid, peeking into CT. He's going to set up for a very quick B split here. They could commit to this TSM if they wanted to. They can catch somebody out early on. Nothing dancing right on the edge of this. And that bomb is making its way out onto the site. Are they going to find the angle? Zipnix takes out nothing to free. Just laying waste on that B site. Sean and Freakazoid are dead. And it's going to be down to Skadoodle and Shroud. And Shroud doing the best that he can. At least catches out Kerrigan. Yeah, this is a, a mess now for Cloud9. The bomb goes down once again. No option but to save the double orb setup. It was looking so promising. Skadoodle boosted up once more, finds the first kill. But then it just seemed like it fell apart. They had to fall back to their bomb sites. Dupree comes out middle, finds two headshots there. And what more can you really say about the round? Is this going to be an instant save of Cloud9 here? They do save two orbs, so very valuable weapons to save, obviously. But you can see TSM not going to be... TSM could just go hunting. They have, the thing? They they have money for right days. Now. They're just going to be holding the B-Tunnels, going towards T-Spawn. They're not going to be looking for it too much here. Obviously aware they're probably in a position to die if they do face his AWPs. But this is the best plan I could have hoped for after the bomb went down to save those guns. But like you said, look at the money for TSM. So strong right now. Carrigan was sat on 13k before his bite. CTs can opt to go into this one. They have obviously will with the double orb. So what kind of buy will they bring to the table? Ah. Ball is coming in. This is probably a good call, I would say. Like, this is running away from them a little bit too much. Work accident. out how... Oh, okay. I thought I'd been tactical. Accident. What kind of accident? <laughs> what kind of accidents happen? I hope it's not that kind. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's too tense right now. Uh, it's too tense. You know, like, keep the nerves under control. Not an accident. Nothing is just so excited. Well, the pause is cancelled, and we go into round number 13. Cloud9, I would say, need these last three, and they're going to have a chance of going into this one. But they've got the double orb set up this time after saving them. That smoke coming in once more. It's very difficult to hold this one off. Shroud's going to commit to it, though. He spotted it's more of a fake going this time. They're going to try and hold their own, and it allows Skadoodle to go back to the A-bomb side. It's going to be a bit of a delayed attention here on Long, actually. They're going to be focusing straight on Shroud. They know that he likes to hold close from Pit. Great timing on the flash there to force him back. Skadoodle going to draw attention to himself, though. Takes out Dupree. He's still holding close as well. Gets the follow-up. Where is Shroud? Shroud, no, he's dead. Zipnix and Cajun. Two headshots. And that is going to open it up now for TSM. They've got control of Long. They have Device waiting around on Cat. He's just perfectly happy to wait and see if he can't pick a rotator off. 
Well, here we go. Then the smoke is down. They can cross to the bombsite. Device patrolling short as well. It'll probably find a kill. He's in a great position to do so. Doesn't land, land the headshot just yet, but there it is. Takes down Freakasoid and will get away with his life, but nothing denies him of that as we're in the two on two. Bomb has been planted. Wow, nothing. Nearly gets that kill through the smoke as well. Right on the edge. Molotov goes down to block him off. Still waiting for Sean to have an impact, and he is going to find the headshot on the Zipnix. Now life gets a little difficult here for Cajun B. Smoke goes down to block off the plant, and now Cajun not going to pull it off. Nothing is there to save the day, and Sean should have plenty of time for the defuse here in this situation. So Cloud9, once again, they save both AWPs, and they finally break that streak of TSMs. It was touch and go at stages that they find the first two fracked, and then TSM bounce back with two of their own, but they all prevailing. They win the clutch situation, and that's a round they definitely needed here. The problem is for them now is they're in that precarious situation. If they lose this one, it's pretty much guaranteed they lose the last round. So they need to make sure they can get this one in the bag. Looks like Shroud will be boosting up Skidoodle once again. Going for that pick towards Jordan. They actually have a two players towards Long here, so adjusting their setup accordingly. And again, Skadoodle this time going up to Cat, and he misses the flick. That could have been it. Of all the times to try and change it up, he had success the last time he went and took a pick into, pick into lower dark. This time looking top mid, no joy for him, but he does manage to just back off and play an old school spot right here on Cat, where it's easy for him to drop into CT if he gets challenged, if he misses the first shot. So we'll see if he's lucky there. This looks like the mid play coming in from TSM, though, and the problem is for Cloud9, they've got no one there right now. They have got two players in B, so they'll be. Well, there it is, nothing adjusting. Can he do anything over this smoke? Bit of a nice spot from nothing. Not gonna get too much info, though. Dupree gives away his spot, and there it is. Re great readjustment of the spray there. Nothing nearly taking him out. Dupree had a 28 HP, and they're gonna go barreling up Cat, where Skadoodle's waiting to great him. Sean Gares picks off one as well, and Skadoodle, can he actually make it out of here in one piece? Yes, he can, but Zipix is waiting for him, and Zipix with two kills nearly makes it happen. Cajun, though, will remove the A defense, and it's going to come down to the B side defense. Sean Garris and Freakazoid, they're rotating over, and Cajun B, he's got 10 HP to get this job done, Henry. They've got a HE grenade on Sean as well. He can make this very simple. He just nades the bomb site. Doesn't knock too just yet, and Cajun gets the first kill one on one now. Freakazoid, he's still committed. He's looking for the fight, and this is dangerous, but he gets it in the end, and Cajun, so close. You can see the frustration on his face. Wow. What a round that was. It was really weird. It looked like Cajun actually spotted him, but didn't opt to shoot his gun at all. I'm not really sure what was going on there, but Freakazoid prevails and takes the round in the fifth one on the board for Cloud9 there. Nice retake coming in. Looked like Cajun V definitely had a footing into that one. But we enter round number 15 now. Cloud9 fighting back after the huge deficit they suffered. Carrigan going to be on the AWP this time. He's having a quiet game. Three for 10 for him. And he, there we go. As Good I job. say that, though, Good he job, picks Henry. it up. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> Skadoodle goes down, and it's the five on four. And uh, CTs need to react to this now. Once you lose your first man, and there we go. Nothing reacts. Finds the kill onto Shaw. Bringing Push. it back into their favor. As it looks like TSM are committing all four men towards middle now. Looks like maybe potentially another mid split coming in. Two towards tunnels, two towards middle. They will be going out there. All to play for, nothing. There. What can you do? Oh, if he just pushed, that could have been a slaughter. It was a perfect flash onto all three. And now Freakazoid is out in the open. Carrying it with the pick. And that is going to work for TSM all day. They have multiple guns sitting at the bottom of that slope. And Cloud9 just fed themselves into a blender. That was a really... Interesting angle for Freakers with the face there. Like one flash took him out and that was it. Carrigan just could be waiting here. Perfect positioning, using that smoke nicely. But Shroud somehow finds him through it. It's now the last round. He has to go for a two on one. Hasn't got a kit. Needs yeah. to find one. Where's the kit? Surely one around here. There's got to be a kit somewhere. He's got a Molotov, a flash. Goes for the pop. Flash misses the jump. He's going to be a half second too late. And now this is where life gets a little bit tricky for him. Man holding close on the side. He spots it. Goes for the wall, but it's not going to happen. Dupree will find the kill in the end. It will end 10 to 5. Team Solo bid with a fantastic first half here off their, after their T side. Yeah, absolutely. Really nice stuff there. Just that last round. I saw what the Cloud9 were trying to do there. Obviously, when you know the mid split's coming in, you've got to decide. You can't just sit there like fish in a barrel. You need to either just choose to push into B tunnels and lock that down, or you go back and face middle. The problem was, though, if you're going to face middle, you need to have some sort of crossfire setup. You can't be standing in the open and just hoping you don't get flashed. One flashbang took them both out. The face came in from TSM. Just an absolute bloodbath there, and they didn't really do much at all. Would have been better off just waiting in the site in that situation. But there we go. TSM take it 10 to 5. Cloud9 doing well towards the end there. It could have been a much more of a devastating affair, but the second half pistol. And this sort of stage of the tournament goes without saying. This is going to be absolutely massive. Now Cloud9 starting on the T side. Let's see what kind of buy they go for. What do they have in store for us? Already Sean Garris goes straight for nades. Kevlar on everybody else. It's interesting with the TSN. They've actually got four sets of armor themselves. Zipex going to be the, the utility player. I guess he's just going to have a kit. This is just confidence, sure. right? Mm. It's confidence we're going to win these fights straight up. We have a kit, so if they get the bomb plan, it's not the end of the world. 
Cloud9, though, they desperately need some, something big here. And Shroud, he finds Device. So that's the first kill that was in mid as well. So it's going to force some kind of reaction. Kerrigan, there it is. Pushes out from Longhouse, hoping to get a backstab kill. And he's not going to find it. Instead, fading back. Dupree will take out Freakazoid, though. And that was up in mid cat. And now this is getting pretty difficult here for Cloud9. It's not looking too good. Kerrigan landing headshot after headshot. He's still alive. And he's there got his teammates is. rotating in as well. Now it is falling apart for Cloud9. They just ran into that wall yet again. Team Solo mid on the CT side. They're just indomitable. That was just textbook CS there. Carrigan with the perfect bait and switch to the pit there. Gets all the attention towards him. Zipex just comes in in the last minute to find the two frags there. And it's sensational stuff there from TSM. After losing that first frag as well, they're coming for a pretty much flawless round. And that's going to be difficult for Cloud9. What do you, what's your next move here? You can force by the Tech Nines and give yourself a difficult gun round. You need your players like Scudu to have the Orphan yes. Dust too. That's his playground. That's where he goes big. It's been a problem for Cloud9 in the past. They're not. Oh, they actually are going for I was going to say, this is oh, probably wait, not the best investment for him. They're going to get Shroud on the scout. He Sky, he goes for a P250 to start, and he just spent uh, nearly all of his money. He's the one skimping 500 bucks, but still, he needs to get some kind of impact out of this investment. Thought that he would just stay on the P250 and try and meet halfway, get that AWP. Sure. This is a big commitment from Cloud9. They need to get something out of it in this round here. But TSM, again, so solid. And TSM with a good mix as well. Three rifles, two SMGs. There's no big hole here for Cloud9 to exploit in the defense. Just rifles everywhere, and the control on long. Zipnex with that spray. He's going to find one through the smoke, despite being flashed. That's muscle memory hard at work. And Kerrigan right on the edge. Freakazoid gone. Device finds another. Kerrigan just continues to rack up the kills. A second one for him as Zipnex finds the last. And Cloud9 get nothing out of that force. Absolutely nothing. You're right there. The force buy comes in. The scout and tech line combo doesn't really amount to much. They go towards long there, but it's smoked out of their own position, getting sprayed through by Zipex and Carrigan. Choice. Interesting choice to go long as well, considering you might yeah, be running into sure, rifles like, over there. I'd be going for the mid split there. Though. Like if you've got to have those kind of weapons, try and have the, the scout do some damage at the start, go through the tech lines, keep it looking long range. But device is forcing the issue here. The top of the middle doesn't get too much out of it though. Equal exchange comes in. Big grenade though doesn't do as much as I thought it would. It should be around tied up now, but that is gonna help for Cloud9. Trout somehow takes down Cajun B and brings the round in their favor in terms of kills. Again. Can they sneak forward, right? There's the HE going out. A little bit of damage and maybe just pushing that gun away, not making it too easy for Cloud9 to pick up a rifle to use against them. Now, TSM now, they have to have a man kind of sitting around here to just mind this area of the map. Yeah. And an aggressive push. This is it. The big moment. Debris goes, what was that? Oh my god, the jumping headshot, the follow-up as well. I thought he was dead for sure. Somehow, he pulls it off. Bomb side is open though. They should be able to get a plan out of this, but Zipex has got other plans for him. Is aware of where he is. Will he be forcing it? He's gonna go in. Takes him down, there it is, the headshot comes in, no plan, it's denied for Cloud9, just going to be Freak as well remaining here, the two on one, had that plan come in, that would have been very beneficial to them, they've got that injection of cash, which they lost after the force buy, but Freak Azoid here, mounts the climb, we'll be able to get a Famous here, can he do anything with it though? No, he cannot, there it is, that answers the question very quickly, so, hey, nothing, shake, shake my head man, that's all you can do. Well, Skidoo's money's not too bad. He could get the glass cannon orb and uh, try and do something with it. I would say probably go for five rifles and then try and do some sort of play together. But let's see what decision he makes here. TSM, on the other hand, Cajun B will be rolling that orb. Famous on Dust 2 for his skills on this one. What can you do with this round? It's 13 to 5. Huge better rounds for TSM to play with. Money looking very healthy as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, let's see. Sean. Ooh. Playing right on the edge of that smoke again, Zip. He just wants to do the damage. Wants to get that damage in, but it's not going to quite happen. And they don't really have any kind of opening here to work with Cloud9. They aren't pushing aggro anywhere at TSM. Nobody on cat holding. Just a real passive play here. Well, the smoke so. of Xbox means mm -hmm. they can get up short undetected. CTs are unaware. They haven't got any presence there either. So it's going to come down to Cajun B with the AWP on A. As I mentioned before, a lot of teams working out how to lock him down these days. What have Cloud9 got in store here? It looks like they will be setting up for something on short. Smoke grenades in hand. This could be the play I was talking about. Smoke off CD spawn, smoke them towards a long flash over, drop some players down and try and isolate the AWP out. Let's see what they can do with it. CTs yet to react to what's going on just yet. Oh, timing as well with that nade. The Molotov is going to go down. That forces Freakazoid back. Don't block yourself up, Freak. Oh, he's going to do it. It is. This is it. The mm. moment. Zipnix is going to be in a great spot now. And Goose, he's got support from Cat as, or from Cars as well on Long Cajun. He's got that angle with the AWP. There we go. One kill. And damn, he, he tags him, but he doesn't get the kill. Instead, it's Zipnix wrapping him up from Goose, doing big damage. They will be able to get that plant, but no, Skadoodle denies it at the last possible second. He somehow misses the shot, and yeah, this is looking like TSM. Not They're going to be... Uh...
I'm not really sure what to make of that round, right? The, the fact that they got uh, they got caught out exactly what was going on. You get Molotov in that situation. Instead of thinking, okay, guys, we've got time here. Let's retreat. They decided to smoke themselves out, give themselves the gray screen, run through, and uh, made a very difficult and a sloppy execution onto the A side there. Pretty convincing round on TSM. And now we're looking down the barrel of the tournament point here for Cloud Line, at least, as they make their way out towards Long. Going to be pushing through that smoke. Could do a little bit lost though. Should be able to catch the CD out of place here. Zipex goes down. Who's going to be playing towards Pistol? Doesn't manage to get in though. Carrigan takes him down and gets a double as well. Yeah, where's the follow up? Nothing, just a half second too late there to support his mate. They could have got the kills, but instead it's going to be Cajun B just racking up frag after frag. And Freakazoid, the last man alive. But not for long. He can go to rest with the rest of his team as it is going to be 10 match points in a row for TSM and there the CT There is an eerie beasts. silence in the stadium right now. Silence the crowd. You know, if you're, if you're away. I mean, this is the home st home team here for Cloud9, basically. Guys, team it's not over yet. though. It's not Stranger over yet. things have happened. In, C in CS, yes. It's always possible. The comeback is always real. Uh, let's see. Device up close. Mauls them. Takes down one and does some significant damage to Shroud. Dupree with the aggressive pushing up for Dark. And yeah, it's just no respect coming out from TSM. They want to get the job done. They want to just completely roll Cloud9. Although Shroud will catch Zipix looking the wrong way. So, bit of a fast one pulled by Cloud9. They definitely made it look like they were going to go to B. And Team Solo Med, they fell for it. Here we go then. Three on two in Cloud9's favor. But Cajun B, as mentioned before, one of the deadliest players in this position. What can you make of this? Oh, he's got that angle. Denied the bomb plant. It's on the wrong side of the box now as well. So Cajun B, or this is Cloud9 now wondering, can we actually get up here safely? You can see Skadoodle just inching his way forward with that AWP, looking for the angle. He's actually just going to be jumping right on top of it. Cajun right below him, though. Peekaboo takes out the one, and it's going to be down to Shroud. Jump shot from Cajun, and the follow-up. It is over. Team Solo mid. They get it in the end. It went three maps, but Cloud9 will not be moving on into the semifinals. Instead, it will be Team Solo mid.